to leave you with what this looks like from the pilot's perspective. Because I'm a pilot, and I think this is the coolest thing ever. Of course, no one I've ever shown it to also agrees that it's the coolest thing ever, but I'm hoping Steve will. This is the night landing of STS-115. We are flying around the heading alignment cone right now. We're looking through the pilot's heads-up display. That's what all the, the green numbers passing by are. On the left, there is airspeed. We're somewhere between 260 and 270 knots. On the right is altitude. We're passing through 28,000 feet right now. In just a moment from the top, you're going to see the east coast of Florida come into view. It's the lights near south of the Kennedy Space Center. In the very center of the screen, there is a square with kind of a fuzzy diamond going in and out of it. That diamond represents guidance. So what the commander is trying to do right now is essentially fly that box over the diamond. And that will keep the shuttle on the right descent path and around the heading alignment cone. Uh, also, that box is going to turn into a circle after a little bit. It doesn't matter too much. Um, well, it matters, but I don't want to explain it. <laughs> At the bottom, uh, which is now disappeared because the uh, controls have been opened, apparently, uh, there is a thing It says CSS. And above that, it says HDG for heading. That's the heading alignment cone. And to the right, there's a horizontal line with a couple of triangles pointed at it. The top triangle represents the, the speed break where it currently is right now. So it's open about maybe 70%. And the bottom triangle represents where the computer wants it to be, which is the same right now. You'll see that making adjustments as we go. And it'll make a big adjustment at 3,000 feet shortly before landing. There's the runway coming into view. And from 10,000 feet, I'm just going to let the astronauts talk for themselves, because I think it's a lot more interesting. The main voice that you're going to hear is the pilot talking the commander through landing. Body flap trail. There you go, 9,000. Still two and two, look good. I agree. 8,000, a little bit of right crosswind on the deck. 7,000. You look good. I agree. 6,000. OK, 5,000, my radar's good, and your radar's good. I agree. I'm uh, going to declutter down, and I'm with you at three, just about 3,000. 3,000. Speed brakes. 3,000 speed brakes are moving to, uh, looks like about 27. Uh, okay. Hey, 2,000 pre-flare, the gear is armed. Copy, pre-flare. I see you in the pre-flare. I see you lagging a little bit. Looks good. 1,000. Max speed, 313. 700. 600. 500. 400. 400. Here, down. Here comes the gear. Gear's moving. I show you coming down on the ball bar. You can turn your HUD up a little bit if you haven't. Going just a little bit high. I agree. A little bit high. There's 100 feet, 255. Plenty of energy. Correcting nicely. There's 50. I see the nose coming up. 3230. Okay, not too high. Not too yet. There we go. We got uh, 2210. You can start setting it down. There we go. 76543. Touch. Here comes the shoot. And I show you going down at one and a half. Down at one and a half. Down at one and a half. Okay, touch. So remember, there's no engines available, so this is their one and only chance at landing. I'd also like to point out that this video started about three and a half minutes ago at 37,000 feet. That's a pretty typical cruising altitude for an airliner. So just think about the captain of your airline saying, ladies and gentlemen, we're beginning our initial descent into Philadelphia or wherever. We'll be on the ground shortly. And by shortly, it means three and a half minutes. <laughs> but that's the way that the shuttle flew, and that's it. Thank you.